Kuwait. Belfast. I don't care whether Catholics are Protestants because I'm neither Catholic nor a neither I'm a white, I'm in India. And why should I worry people fighting in Ireland? Why should I worry? I went also to Jerusalem, Israel and Egypt and other Arab countries for peace mission. I am not a Jew, I am not a Arab. I don't care, they can both kill each other. Done. I flew from Tel Aviv to Cairo in a most difficult mission. Almost I got shot down by Israeli planes and Egyptian planes. I had to actually fight back with my small tiny plane, big jets and big fighter planes. I had to fight back. A civilian plane, I fought. We had first time a dog fight between a civilian plane and then <laughs> jet plane. And uh, they got all types of missiles and guns and rockets. My single plane don't have any rockets, but I got weapon too. I carried lots of weapons so that I can defend myself. I had lots of Mary gold flowers filled up in my blanket, uh, in my back seat, in a big gunny, gunny bag. So when the Australian jet came to attack me, I opened my window and opened my gun and I took one big Mary gold and shot at the Israeli pilot. <laughs> I did literally I did through my gun, my rocket, a very good flower at the because he came about five feet away from my middle. So I literally shot him down with my very very good flower. And his hand was on a on a trigger. One small button he pushes, my plane will be into nothing. Why did I take the chance? Because Arab I love more or Jewish I love more. No. I love all human beings. Doesn't matter what they name to that, they are all my human brothers. Same way Hindus and Muslims are fighting. Just before that I went to India. Before uh, the India and Pakistan war. I saw the refugees. I also have went to peace mission over India and Pakistan. Pakistan's Muslims from my childhood onward, they're all against Hindus, is it not? But I went to the world, I did not think they are different from my Hindu brothers. I did not see only my Hindu brothers are all good people. There are also good Muslim people also, just like generous and good as Hindus. I am a Hindu went into a Muslim country with love and what did I get? I got also love back. Now when I went from Israel uh, Tel Aviv to Cairo, I flew over the Suez Canal, most dangerous mission ever I flew. With me my co-pilot was one of my students. You know who he was he? Who was he? A Jew from Buffalo. His name is Brent Jacobson. He is literally a Jew. I told Bren, when before I took a salary, my chance of coming from this mission is 50-50. Is At least if I go to an Arab country without passport, visa, if I land, there is some consideration because I am not a Jew, I am a, mm. I'm an Indian and a Hindu. Arabs don't hate Hindu, Hindu and Jew, but they do hate a Jew. A Jew. And you come with me, to an Arab country before passport, before visa, landing in there and also going over the Suez Canal and seeing all there. Because other side of the Suez Canal, you got Egyptians at that time. This side of the Suez Canal, they got Israelis. Only a small portion of water separates them. And either side, they can a gun can easily pass through. And a Jew is going over that Arab country and they know a Jew and the Swami is coming over that Suez Canal. Suppose you escape from Arab, from Israeli and came, how long it takes to cross the Suez Canal? How long it takes? Sunday. Just a couple of seconds by the plane. Other side, you've got all anti aircraft guns and missiles on the desert. How long did it take to shoot a small, tiny plane, an Apache? How long did it take? One second. 
and by knowing, they already know that a Jew is going with me because already newspaper uh, reviews are, are blasting. So I'm east going to a peace mission from Tel Aviv to Cairo. They already know. So when the planes came there, it's, we have got no permission to come. In fact, even there's a permission, nobody wants, no single plane ever flew over that area because anything fly, even a fly, they will shoot down. That they don't want to know the secrets. Now your chance of coming is very nil. And even if you survive and land there in Egypt, what they will do to a Jew? When they land without passport and so forth, what they will do? They will put him in a real prison and torture and see if possible. But what did Ben Jacket himself? No Swami, I am going to come. We flew from all the way from all the way uh, Tel Aviv and so forth. We got no we, we got all this no problem. But there it's different for him. But he said, I'll come because I come with uh, I won't come, I'm going with love and I'm I see, I'm not afraid of what consequences. So, so we both flew. And then the Israeli planes uh, when he left over, and then the Israeli started, with, they saw in the radar that they moved back to Israeli territory. But what's it? They, they warned us, uh, Charlie Fox Club, Rome, and others made identification. You are now trespassing the uh, the area, and you are back in Israeli airspace. It's a prohibited. You must turn back immediately to your coast. Of course, it's supposed to be Nicosia. That's what the place I made my flight from. Then I said, um, before that, I tried to, before I entered it, and I, uh, and I took off the tell me naturally I had to make a five five plan go there. And uh, I 50 miles off this coast of Tel Aviv, Israel, it is international water. And then I may call the Nicosia to give a new flight plan. Please make a Cairo and give this new flight plan. We are changing our flight plan. We are not coming to Nicosia, we are, we are going to no. Cairo. So I gave all the, you know, the, the Technical things. Uh, my, my flight plan is this, and my estimated uh, time of arrival such and such time. As if I got permission, you see. And uh, my I got enough so much fuel, and uh, uh, passengers are two, and uh, uh, one of them is Canadian, one is American. All this, please inform this thing. And our estimated time. This general rule, you know, we had before airport, we had to inform flight plans we had to make, and so inform the head. And the person said, no, it is not possible. First of all, the route is completely blocked. You are not allowed to go. It's a private area. Secondly, Cairo will never give you permission, so please don't attempt. Then I said, please convey this message because my radio won't reach Cairo there from that area. So we have to pass this flight plan for them. Anyhow, they, they were all in panic, they don't know what to do. By that time, we back in the Israeli airplane take back, because to come to Suez Canal, and there comes the Israeli then. And until that, they were, when we were back, until we were not in the Israeli airspace, they were they kept quiet. But once, and once we are back in the Israeli airspace, that voice came from the radio. Well, Charlie Fox, that you are on the private area, immediately turn back to the original code, otherwise you will be shot down. Then I said on the radio, well, we made a flight plan to go to Cairo and we are going to the Suez Canal. That's our uh, route of flight. And we are not going to change our course. If you are going to shoot us down, you are welcome to do because so many people died in the name of war. So two people are ready to die, die in the name of peace. So they are ready to die. With that, I shut off the radio so that they won't call us back. <laughs> and next minute, not only they were they're calling on the radio, they already sent their fighter planes. They are flying about 20,000 feet up. I am only about 3,000 feet, you see. And they can watch where we are moving, every movement. And within next minutes, you know, they got fighter planes like sleep ones, and I'm like a Volkswagen, 130 miles away. <laughs> and uh, those fighter planes can just swoop down, just suddenly, <laughs> he came down in front of me. And uh, then he was going zigzag everywhere to stop me from further going. I kept on my course. And uh, he was, he has got such a high speed, you know, he can shoot straight up, and they are suddenly fired him, they can train for him. For this type of dog fight with the other fight planes, you know, they here they don't have any really manual because I just only can do one thing with my plane. Just go <laughs> straight and just turn 160 degrees there. That's <laughs> their plane can go upside down, they can fly also straight upside down, down, right, left, anything they can do, you see. So he was so fast, so he, he called another uh, jet to help him to fight with me. So he's a, a smaller jet with slow, he can go very slow. And so he came and uh, I could see the pilot in the other pilot. It's only about five feet away from my wingtip. 
Then they don't make the radio is shut off, they couldn't get me. And then I saw the pilot was talking, Israeli pilot, turned back to Tel Aviv. Maybe two purpose. He knew I was carrying a Jew to, to Cairo. <laughs> they are also worried about because you may escape from us, but once you pass the Suez Canal, they can shoot you down. So they were talking to turn back. That day that I threw a, a flower at him. And next minute, <laughs> no. next minute, my plane shook violently. There was a big explosion. I knew. I told even before he left off to tell me, he told Brent, we know within half an hour our karma is over, we just were uh, still, there is some karma, we know within that. As soon as we have reached Suez Canal, one of us will, uh, either the Egyptians are going to shoot, shoot down or Israelis. So we know that if escaping is very, very impossible. But if we escape, we know that we got another chance to live in this world, we know in half an hour. And uh, when they, yeah. suddenly the shoot, I know, Brent, I think we've been shot. Let us meditate now. I think our life is <laughs> and the plane went on out of control and then after a few minutes, it stabilized. I look at the all the gadgets, the, the 